Today, I am going to tell you how I acquired an SEO-optimized e-commerce site for only €10,600. I will also show you how I doubled its revenue to make it profitable in less than seven months. In this video, we will go into detail about the numbers to be as transparent as possible regarding costs, expenses, taxes, etc. You will see why I acquired this store, how you can also acquire one, and the strategies implemented to reach these amounts. So why did I acquire this site? First of all, if you don't know me, I am Ping and I have been doing dropshipping since 2019. I currently have about 30 stores that are running steadily and sustainably thanks to a strategy based on SEO and Google Ads. Since I am based in France, I avoid taking a large salary and reinvest a significant portion of my available cash into different projects to enjoy myself. For example, now I will be able to reduce my corporate tax and I will continue to have fun looking for growth with this kind of store. How does it work? To acquire sites, you can use online platforms like FIPA, Acquire or the most well-known in France, Dot Market, which I used. On Dot Market, there are a lot of sites available. Even today, I encourage you to take a look and you will simply need to purchase an annual subscription if you find a site that interests you and you want to take action to contact the seller. So that's what I did at the end of 2023 and the advantage is that on this platform there are a lot of sites listed that are in the field of dropshipping and more specifically in SEO. It allows for a minimum reassurance about the stability of income even though right now SEO is no longer as stable as it has been sold to us. But I have strong skills in Google Ads and I know that this post will enhance the organic search ranking. Additionally, I will be able to drive growth on my best sellers. This acquisition channel is therefore quite neglected by SEO site publishers, which offers us many opportunities. On average, a dropshipping site is valued between X16 and X24, the average annual monthly profit. For example, if you have a site that generates 3,000 euros in revenue per month and produces 1,000 euros in monthly profit, you can expect to sell it for between 16,000 and 24,000 euros depending on the potential of the niche, the acquisition channels, or simply whether there is a high demand or not. Just like in real estate, as a buyer, I will look for the gem below market price and try to improve the site afterwards so that it increases in value and eventually resell it for a profit or simply keep it as a source of passive income. The site I found was in a niche that I knew very well because I simply have a similar site in this field but in another market abroad. Therefore, I was very familiar with the potential. My first instinct was to analyze the organic traffic of the site. For that, I went on SEMrush and I was able to see that the site had been very, very stable for several years. He had very good top positions on queries with high potential and there was almost no competition. In addition to that, unlike many SEO sites, this one had a very professional design, well-branded, with a strong brand image that inspired trust. I therefore contacted the seller who had just lowered the selling price of his site on the platform and we found ourselves in a fairly low range for the revenue it could generate. I contacted him and said that I was ready to buy it for 10,000 euros cash right now if he wanted. Unfortunately, well, it's a bit of the game, but he said he had quite a few hot contacts to acquire the site for between 12,000 and 14,000 euros since he had just lowered the price. And so I still stuck to my offer, saying that I could make an effort to go up to a maximum of 10,600 euros at that moment, I left him about 10 days and then he got back to me. It was already the end of the year, December 31st, I remember. At that moment, since I had told him it was the end of the accounting year for my company, it was the last deadline I had, so he was under a little bit of pressure regarding the timing. He contacted me again, everything was ready, I made the transfer directly and then we held the session later. I had already prepared everything regarding the contract and assignment to do it correctly. Fortunately, since the dropshipping world is quite small, we had a mutual friend which allowed us to conduct the transaction online with trust. Of course, one must always take precautions. We had the contract well signed and well prepared, all of that. Otherwise, you can go through intermediaries like Dot Market, which can offer this kind of service for a small commission. By the way, if you happen to be interested in seeing what the contract I used for the transfer of this site looks like, feel free to check the description. I will try to provide it for you for free, no worries, but of course, it doesn't commit you to anything at all. I used it because that's what I do every time for my transactions. I'm not an expert in the field and it was still for a relatively low amount. 10,000 euros is manageable. But for larger amounts, of course, make sure to protect yourself well and contact experts in the field. Now let's take a look at the different strategies I was able to implement since acquiring the site. In reality, I didn't do much either since the SEO content was already extremely well done and all I had to do was update the products. Generally, after two to three years, since the site had some age, we end up with quite a few products out of stock or simply online. But as soon as a customer comes to buy the product, we realize that it no longer exists on purchasing platforms like AliExpress because factories simply stop producing various products after a certain time to create new ranges, new pieces and new collections. Therefore, we won't be able to fulfill our orders. That's why I asked my service provider, who usually handles adding products to my different sites, to update the product images. 
we just modify the images if possible and we try to find similar products that are very close so that we can keep the SEO title and the same URL to avoid making too many significant changes in terms of SEO on product pages that rank for certain interesting keywords. At the same time, I also gave access to the store to my agent and my service provider who takes care of placing orders with this agent and also handles the after sales service for all my stores. So this part was easy to delegate since it was already in place in my other businesses. Right now, I place 20% of my orders on AliExpress through e-sales and the remaining 80% are made on my agent's platform, which is sometimes a bit slower to deliver. However, it makes things easier for me since we can customize all the packaging with the brand's logos and it also allows me to have a trusted intermediary to facilitate communication in case of any issues. Then in terms of marketing, I just set up a few points like multi-currency with Shopify market, which allowed me to target other markets and make sales in the USA with ShopPay or even in Colombia in other countries where we didn't expect to make sales at all. I also added the one-click upsell to avoid wasting too much time and to do it in a simple and effective way. I did it with an application called Vanga AI. This application will allow us to showcase different products to our buyers and thus increase the average cart value. Finally, the email and SMS marketing were already very well established, so I didn't have to revisit them. I just had to do everything related to media buy especially with google shopping where i will present the strategy to you right away let's go we meet here on the google ads account of the store we can see that we started the ads on january 31 and now we will look at the results until august 31 we can see that we spent around 7600 euros and generated 8300 euros in conversions and if we look at the campaign level we have a really simple structure where i didn't overthink it and we can see that it can work very well like this too in fact i started here with a standard shopping campaign to maximize clicks so in this shopping i came to add all the products in general we will segment with ad groups based on the different collections and categories of the store here i didn't overthink it i put everything in a single ad group that includes all the products in this other group, we can see the item IDs of our products and what we can observe is that at the very top, for example, we have products that spent 338 euros and generated 1200 euros in conversions, making them very profitable. Similarly, there are also products that spent 200 euros for 600 euros in conversions, which is quite interesting. Sometimes what can be even more interesting is to disable the best selling products and isolate them in another shopping campaign. That's what I did. And you can find it in the second shopping campaign where I set a target ROAS. Basically, Google will come in and make a bid. Instead of doing it on a pay-per-click basis, it will make a smart bid and therefore sometimes it will end up paying a bit more for the click. To generate sales, but in general, it is still a practice that is quite profitable and we will explore this in more depth later. We will also see that sometimes there are products that are not profitable at all. For this product, we spent 115 euros, generated 1,922 clicks, and only made two conversions worth 55 euros, which is therefore not profitable at all. We are going to disable this product to prevent Google from spending even more money on this type of product, which is actually a financial black hole. This will allow us to allocate the budget to other products that may be a bit lower and have not yet spent enough money for us to make decisions on whether they are winning products to isolate or financial black holes to exclude. Because generally, when Google has found these products to spend on, it will continue to spend on them because they perform well. However, if we are not profitable, we will end up losing a lot of money. So we need to make sure to monitor all of this regularly. Generally, I do this every two to three weeks. At the beginning, when I launched the campaign, I let it run for quite a while before making decisions. We can see, for example, that if we go back to the overview of the manual shopping campaign, it has been running here since January 29 and is still running today in testing on other products. But the thing is, in parallel, I created the shopping campaign in Target Rose, which was set up only on May 13th, where I isolated the winning products that are still bringing in quite a bit of money. As we can see, it has a return on investment that is much higher than the other shopping campaign. If we go back to the level of the campaigns here, we can see the campaign to maximize clicks that we created at the very beginning to test the products, accumulating as much data as possible for the Google algorithm. Once you have enough information, you can make decisions to isolate, for example, your winning products in another shopping campaign targeting ROAS. This is what we did after three to four months of data collection. And in this shopping winner, we are going to try to find an interesting ROAS. As we can see here, I set a target ROAS of 320%. And well, the goal was achieved here with a ROAS of 3.2 ROAS. If we look at the available products in it, there are only four available and active. Initially, there were even five in total, but one was deactivated because it was no longer as profitable as expected. We can see that I had a 320% ROAS and this product at 2.17 was pulling the campaign down. In addition, he ended up spending quite a bit of money and in the end, the Google algorithm was only looking for a 320% return on investment. Knowing that he could only achieve a ROAS of 2.17, it was fortunate that there were others that raised the average ROAS. However, these products could have performed better 
perhaps aiming for an average ROAS of 400 for the campaign. It's just that this product was dragging down the entire campaign. That's why it can sometimes be interesting to segment the ad groups by ROAS level, which I had started to implement here with an ad group at ROAS 4 plus. And here we find products with ROAS 3 plus. But you can see that it's a highly relevant strategy. We end up with very powerful winning products. For example, here with a 4.24 ROAS, 390, 348, and here at 954 ROAS. Basically, we have an average ROAS of four on our very big winners. For every $1 invested, we end up with $4 earned. Therefore, these are the products on which we will focus and try to optimize through this kind of campaign. On the other hand, when using a smart bidding strategy, you can see that the average CPC here will increase. It may even triple. We are at 0.15 for the average CPC, while in the testing campaign focused on maximizing clicks, we are around 0.06 for the CPC. So that was to show you a bit of the strategy I had implemented on Google Ads. Very simple, without any hassle. We isolate the winners, exclude the financial black holes, and in the long run, with all the data collected, we end up with very profitable campaigns that we can scale. Then, of course, you can make other small optimizations like excluding words that are not relevant. By the way, it's quite funny because on this account, if we look at the keywords, whether excluded or not, generally, the best practice is to exclude anything that is competing brands. I have ASOS as a competitor, and we can see that with the keyword ASOS, I sometimes rank with my products and it's a profitable keyword for me to position myself on. If we look at the insights report here in the search terms, we will see the keyword stand out. Here we have Zara, which hasn't made me any sales this time. But if we look at the conversions, here we have ASOS. ASOS comes out at 296 per purchase. Sometimes it's really interesting in the end to position oneself among competitors and not necessarily to always exclude them. But this was just an example I wanted to show you. Otherwise, there are other mockups that we can exclude to optimize the campaign, of course. And it's always an interesting thing to do. Here we are on the Shopify store dashboard with the results from the last 12 months. As you can see, at the end of last year, it was no longer generating sales. The seller had even disabled the checkout to facilitate the transfer of the site to avoid any hassle with refunds, etc. He will no longer have access to the store. So I took over the store in January. We generated 2,300 euros in the first month, and then we activated Google Shopping to generate more and more money until we reached 6,000 euros in sales by July. We have a total of 30,000 euros in sales revenue. If we look at advertising expenses, we end up with about 7,600 euros in ad costs over that entire period. I tried to compile this in a Google sheet along with the accounting. We see here 30,053 euros in revenue from January to August and an expenditure in ads. I have put 7,693. And in terms of product cost, we end up with a product cost of 10,000 euros. Generally, we find ourselves at all X3 on the selling prices. So clearly we end up with a proper 10,000 euros for 30,000 euros in sales, 30,000 euros upfront. In total, we end up with a profit of 1 to 200 euros. So this is the profit after deducting the advertising costs and the product costs. There are still some other small expenses, such as the cost of service providers and transaction costs. These represent about 1-2% to of the revenue. Not too much either, especially since the service providers work on about 20 or 30 shops, so it is easily amortized with all the other shops. Otherwise, depending on your status, for example, if you are a company like me, we may be required to collect VAT. So from the 30,000 euros that I recovered here, we can expect about 5,000 euros in VAT that will need to be collected and therefore paid to the state. But if we take into account for example, the purchase price of my site of 10,600 euro, we had here 1,766 of VAT to pay that I can deduct from that amount. This results in 3,242 euros of VAT to be paid on our profit, which we can deduct, leaving us with 12,000 minus 3,200, resulting in a real profit of 8,844 euros. On this profit, we can either add corporate tax and thus incur additional charges. But for example, if we take into account once again the purchase price I spent for the store, it lowered my corporate tax at that time. We can then see this difference with the corporate tax I will have to pay on this year's profit. In any case, we end up with 8,144 euros, which ultimately, if we deduct the price of the site brings us back to zero euros. We end up with a fully reimbursed site after seven months of work on it. Now, throughout the end of the year, we will be able to be profitable, especially in Q4, the period when we generally make the most money, and thus we will be able to seek all the profitability from the site. Also, don't forget that if there is a goal of reselling the website, the site does have a monthly profit that is very interesting when averaged over the year. Therefore, it is potentially possible to resell the site for around 20,000 to 25,000 euros very easily, provided the amounts are stabilized throughout the year. 
year. So that was a brief overview of the concrete results. As you can see, we are very, very profitable with this kind of project and it doesn't require a lot of work from me because it's completely delegated. I hardly ever spend time on it. I just need to add money to the platform to pay my agent at the end of each month. However, my service provider tells me how much I need to put in each time since he also manages all the accounting between the different sites. So that was to introduce you to this project. I hope you liked it. You can see that this site isn't making a huge number of sales either. It can be optimized, particularly in terms of conversion rate. Here we are in a market where the conversion rate is very, very low, but with the CPC you saw on Google Ad, which is also very low, we can easily break even in terms of profits. After all, we are still in a clothing niche, so we do have quite a few returns. For example, if we look at the month of August, we can see that my revenue was much lower. This can be explained by a refund here of 500 euros, particularly when a customer is not satisfied and returns a product that we have to refund, or sometimes it's simply products that are still out of stock and have not been updated, and therefore we cannot send the product. We therefore have to refund the customer even though he had paid us to receive the product. Over the last 90 days, we can see that there are periods where we are quite negative, with days showing losses of 150 euros, 124 euros, 49 euros, 500 euros, and 180 euros. There have been quite a few refunds, even though if we look at the total sales report here, we can see that throughout the year we actually generated 44,000 euros in sales, except that we had over 13,000 euros in refunds, which gives us 30,000 euros in net sales. And then, of course, there are all the costs I mentioned. In any case, that's all for the presentation of the case study on the acquisition of my site for 10,600 euros on dot market for an SEO dropshipping store, to which I added strategies in Google Ads, including strategies that I share in the online course and that I recommend you join if you are interested. Otherwise, you still have the option to join the completely free Discord. The link is in the description. If you want to join a community of e-commerce merchants and entrepreneurs like me, don't hesitate to join us.